All right. I think we're good to go, Dan. What do you think? Well, let's just say uh, hopefully it can't get any worse than the start we had last time. So <laughs> we're here on Monday night, and we are having a very special episode today. So we're going to be doing a Disney-only trivia. We got 25 questions, five different categories broken up between – what we got? We got classic Disney films, the Disney Renaissance. Oh, let me see what we got. We start off with Disney Renaissance, Disney history, animated classics, live action films, and Disney parks. Yes. And then a really good bonus question, should we need it? Uh, you want to run down through the rules real quick, Dan, and then we'll kick this okay. off, and I'll kind of see who's in here. Yeah, so essentially, <clears throat> essentially we are – Going to have five rounds. Each round, the top three people will get one point. So you place, as long as you get in the top three, you will get a point. The person with the most points at the end of the five rounds wins. If we have a tie, we have a tiebreaker question uh, already made up and ready to go. So speed does count too. It takes yes. into our, the software takes into account who answered first, guys. So make sure uh, make sure that you're speedy on those keyboards right there for us. So let's take a quick look, see who's in here. Yes, I'm a nerd. I uh, I comment on my own live stream, so there we go. Um, what else we got in here? Caden's in here. What's going on, Caden? How we doing? Mitchell is in here. What's going Mitch, on, Mitch? What's going on? Stephanie, back at it, and Stephanie promises to win tonight. So there's gonna it's gonna be a battle. She she yeah. thinks that she has the most Disney knowledge. We're gonna find out. Yeah. Brooke, what's going on, Brooke? What is going on? This is gonna <laughs> be interesting. Says, I, because a lot of people, a lot of people think they're Disney experts. Disney's one of those things that, and Kyle and I made sure we we put some ones in there. We think a lot of people know. We put some ones that are probably niche questions, you know, where some people know it. If you know, some people won't. But I think it's going to be a good, well-rounded game. So, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I love Disney. I can't wait. I think uh, it's going to be pretty awesome. All right, let's. Get ready here. Let me pop that link in there. Mitch wants to know why I'm not set up on the couch. Mitch, because I'm not tech savvy enough, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> and that's that's the only reason. All right. Uh, we're going to get, get right the, to it, guys. We're going to we get, get right get it started, into it. and I'll get my screen shared here. All right. Share. Oh, let me take that off. There we go. Are we good? We're good. Here we go. All right. Look at that. We're already smoother than last time. All right. I'll read off first round here. Oh, we got to wait right. for the uh, the glitch here. How about yeah. that background, guys? Look at that. Worked hard on this. It's beautiful. What do you see the next one? Absolutely beautiful. So round one, we're dealing with Disney Renaissance. Look at that. All right. What here movie kicked off the Disney Renaissance? One, The Little Mermaid. Two, Beauty and the Beast. Three, The Lion King. Four, Oliver and Company. I'm curious to see how many get this right. A lot of people may not even know what the Disney Renaissance is, and I'll wait till after the uh, – wait till after, and then we can kind of talk about it. So, guys, the Disney Renaissance is kind of known as late 80s and through the 90s. It was really struggling up to that point with their animation. And this movie kind of kicked off what they call the Disney Renaissance, where literally it was like one hit after the next for like the next 10 years that really kind of put their animation back on the map and really took them out of some tough times because Disney was really struggling financially. Yep. All right. So, yes, Little Mermaid is right. 1989 is when that came out. It was right before Beauty and the Beast came out. Yeah, interesting fact, too. Like, you got the movie Oliver and Company was actually the movie right before that. And that was kind of the yes. precursor to that. And Oliver and Company doesn't get enough love. I'm just saying. Which of these was the first animated film to ever be nominated for Best Picture? One, The Lion King. Two, Toy Story. Three, Beauty and the Beast. Four, uh, four Toy Story 3. Another interesting one right here. Yeah, the first animated film to ever be nominated for Best Picture. If you really think about that, that's an impressive feat. You really think about like animated film being nominated, and 
Spoiler alert, so, a few of these have been nominated. I was going to say, a little bit of a trick question here because two of these actually have been nominated. The question is which one was first. And, guys, I'm sorry if there's a little bit of a lag. We were without power for about five hours earlier, and we finally just got it back an hour ago. So I think my Internet's still adjusting to it, but I think we should be we should be good. Beauty and the Beast. Only a few people got that. I one knew yet. that was going to be a tough one. So actually, guys, the other one that, that was nominated was actually the only one that didn't get a didn't get an answer on there. Toy Story three was nominated in twenty ten uh, for best picture as well, and Beauty and the Beast was the first uh, up to that point, the only one. So uh, number three, what legendary musician composed and recorded songs for the movie Tarzan? One Elton John, two Phil Collins, three Peter Gabriel, four Hans Zimmer. And you know the funny thing is, Kyle and I had the Tarzan CD. Uh, listen to the listen to the crap out of that thing. I mean, um, mm -hmm. I was what five Mom, years old in, in the that. in the minivan. Oh yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is, a lot of people, especially at the time, really preferred Elton John and Lion King's mm -hmm. versions of uh, versus Phil Collins. You got to admit though, Phil Collins, the guy went all out for the soundtrack. He really did. Yeah. Yeah, so anybody that didn't know, Dan Dan just said uh, Phil Collins, and that is the right answer for it. So let's see. Everybody course, got that one. Of course so. everyone knew that because Phil Collins is the man. We threw in Peter Gabriel because he kind of sounds like him. We thought might that mm -hmm. might do it. And Hans Zimmer actually composed. So Elton John wrote and recorded a lot of the songs for Lion King. Hans Zimmer did like all the epic scores and stuff. Hans Zimmer did the opening with, where the sun comes up and the circle of life. So uh, all right, number four. What legendary actor lended his voice for Genie in the animated version of Aladdin? One, Robin Williams. Two, Will Smith. Three, Bill Murray. Four, James Woods. This one's going to be interesting because I feel like this is going to be everyone gets it right. Now, who gets it first? This is where the this yes. is where the point comes important is who gets it first, who enters the quickest. Mm hmm. So fun fact about this too, I believe if I'm not mistaken, Robin Williams originally he got had a fallout with Disney because he did not want his name used and associated mm -hmm. with advertising, and they did yeah. anyway. And he was really upset, and still up until that's his why death, he was still angry with them about that. That's why he never, yeah, he never came back and reprised the role at all for him, uh, at least in the second one or whatever. Um, and then for uh, a lot of, so apparently a lot of his scenes, there's apparently hours of. Uh, footage of him just improvising like all of his all of his lines were improv in the entire movie apparently which is pretty amazing so uh all right number five what year was hercules released one 1998 two 1997 three 1996 or four 1999 i, I liked hercules but it, you know I don't know. The it animation on that one seems very lazy to me for a Disney mm -hmm. film. The animation scene, yeah. and I know that's a, I know that's a stylistic. It's, it was choice. towards, it was towards the tail end of the, uh, of the Renaissance. Yep, and I much prefer when you look at something like beautiful, like Tarzan, and then Hercules yeah. is right before that, and it's like what? It makes you wonder. I don't really understand that. that yeah, that was one of those ones where um, I it was mean, a cash grab. Cash. I was gonna say it's not a it's not a bad movie. The voice acting is pretty good and everything, but I I was never like a massive fan of it. A lot of people say in '99, so Tarzan was actually '99. I think Mulan was '98. Yes, and then yep. Hercules was right before that at '97. Yep. All right, so that's the end of the first round. Let's see who uh, gets out on top on that one. So Sean with a point, with four correct. Stephanie Kibby with four correct, and. Caden Alexander with three just entered it a little quicker than a couple other people. So, like I said, guys, speed is what is also important aside from getting the answers correct. So we're good for round two. Let's do it. All right. Round two is what, Disney, Kyle? Disney history. Disney history. This is what I feel read, like. I'll let Dan read these ones off. Yeah, this is – guys, these are all good questions. We went through and personally picked every question – that we were doing. I am a huge loser and watch YouTube videos on the history of like Disney and Disney world and like Walt Disney. So oh, I, I love I'm, Disney. It's very fascinating. You know, the entire You know what I thing. miss? You know what I miss? The old Disney VHS is that were in like those vinyl cases. The smell. Oh, the smell. Right. Yep. Question number one. What was the original name for Mickey mouse? Is it Maximus Mickey Mortimer or Matthew? And his wife actually is the one who convinced him to change the name. 
So, yes, um, Walt had a very, very different name. So, you, anybody that didn't answer, guys, you can eliminate number two. We threw it in there as a trick. But uh, yes, Walt wanted actually had him named something different when he was first animating, and his wife convinced him to change the name. Looks like I'm looking at the comments right now. It looks like a lot of people got this. Maybe everyone did. Kyle and I really tried hard to come up with some really bad, but there's not Mortimer is just a that's just a bad name. That's a bad name. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. I apologize to anyone who named Mort or anything like that, but um, yeah, that's bad. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So, question number two. What date did Walt Disney claim was the birthday of Mickey Mouse? October 10th, 1928. October 1st, 1929. October 10th, 1929. October 1st, 1928. Kyle actually knew this one. I did not know this one originally. Mm -hmm. This was Kyle's question. Not going to lie. I just, wa I, I just watched the, uh, the <laughs> biography of Walt Disney on Amazon Prime. That's a really good one, too. It's it, really, is, uh, it is really good. Disney Plus. Two, uh, two hours of epicness. Do yeah. yourself a favor, watch it. It's actually, it is really good. That guy lived a fascinating life. He really did. Let's see how many peeps get this one. We got a couple people. Just a couple. October 1st, 1920. A lot of people went October 10th, 1929. And I don't know if people had a reason for it. I honestly did not know that one. That's that's a tougher one, I think. Looks like uh, Buff Edits and Mitch got that. So question number three. Walt Disney had a brother who helped him found the company. What was his brother's name? Is it Pete, William, Roy, or Wyatt? He actually uh, stayed on after uh, Disney Walt Disney's death and helped complete uh, Disney World. Correct. because Walt had passed before Disney World was completed. Correct. Yeah. And, and uh, his brother Roy was more of the financial end of things. So yes. Walt was definitely the dreamer. He was definitely the doer in terms of coming up with ideas and executing on it. Roy was the one that had to deal with all of Walt's, as he would say, crazy ideas and go to the bank to get fu uh, funding for it. And uh, Walt actually almost bankrupted Disney uh, like a dozen times. So yes. um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, help Roy gave him in terms of just keeping them on on track and not obviously not bankrupting the company and building it to where it is today. Looks like most people got that one right. Yeah, Roy O. Disney. Uh, here we go. So question number four: Snow White made history when it finally hit theaters. What year was that? So 1937, 39, 38, or 40? So guys, Snow White was Walt's baby. Um, he believed uh, even afterwards, nothing would ever live up to it in terms of the quality of the animation, how much dedication they put into it. And this thing took years of production and went way over budget um, to, to get released. But then when it finally actually did, uh, it wowed audiences. People were really impressed with it. But it still wasn't super profitable at the box office until they re-released it. Um, and then, obviously, ever since then, it's been a massive hit for them. Curious Again, what, what's that? I was just going to say, I'm curious. Yeah, I figured a lot of people go in 1940. Uh, only, looks like, one person got 1938 correct. Mama S got it. She's our reigning champ. It's reigning champ coming out of the woodwork to, to get one right here. All right, uh, final question. What year was Disneyland opened? Disneyland, not Disney World. So fun fact about this, uh, I was telling Kyle when we came up with this question, I always thought it was one in particular because, um, one answer in particular because on Jurassic Park, I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan, um, John Hammond says in the movie, Disneyland opened in a specific year and... He actually, gives actually, the wrong year. he actually gives the wrong year, which I always thought was <laughs> kind of funny. Let's see how many people get this one. Stephanie Stevens says this round was hard. Well, you know, you just need to brush up on your... Oh, yeah. You're going to make it tough. So 1955, looks like we had Sean and Brooke get that correct. Um, yeah, and so in Jurassic Park, John Hammond says Disneyland opened in 1956. And 
nothing worked infamously. So uh, it's actually he was, he was right about the fact that nothing worked. Uh, they had yeah. a lot of problems, but people were in awe of what they built. So it looks like Sean gets uh, another one on the board to give him two. Mitch goes on the board with one. And Buff Edits gets on the board with one as well. All right. Round three. We've got the animated classics. So this is going to be all stuff uh, earlier than the Disney Renaissance, guys. So this is pre-1989-ish. But most of it's gonna most of it's gonna be uh, some of the older movies, some of the original stuff. Yeah, the the nice thing I will say, Disney Plus is really uh, we've watched a lot more Disney films the last year or two. Mm-hmm. Than I really have in the last ten. It's been really nice, actually. There's a lot of movies that I've seen now that I never saw as a kid. Uh, all right, so what was the second full length animated feature from Disney? So we all know Snow White was the first. What was the second? One, Alice in Wonderland. Two, Bambi. Three, Dumbo. Four, Pinocchio. This is going to be interesting because all four of these are right in that time frame. Yeah. Um, so we hmm. actually have, I believe, number two, three, and four in terms of the second, third, and fourth full-length animated ones on there. And yes. I think Alice in Wonderland was the only one that was a little bit further down the road. I still have never. I've seen every other movie. I've not seen. I have not seen Dumbo. I still have never seen it. I think I've seen it one time. I've, I've seen a lot of a lot of ones. Like I said, now that I've got a daughter, we watch like Cinderella, Little Mermaid, uh, stuff like that that we never really watched as a kid, just because we grew up with with three boys, so we never watched a lot of that. A lot of people saying Bambi. That's a that's an interesting choice, and I probably I think Bambi was actually number three, and then yeah. Dumbo was four. Yep. All right, number two. What was the last Disney animated movie to be personally overseen by Walt Disney before his death? One, Cinderella. Two, The Jungle Book. Three, Fantasia. Four, Sleeping Beauty. Another interesting one. You have to know about the time period of when Walt died, um, yes. and that might might be uh, you know something important to remember later on in the game. Do you know the answer to this one, Dan? This is one that I. This is I'm this gonna, is one of the sections I put together. I'm gonna guess uh, sleep. Or no, I'm gonna guess the Jungle Book because I believe Jungle right. Book came out in 1968, 67. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was right around there. But yeah, you'd be right. We just watched it the other day, so that's uh, it was a it was an educated guess. All right, so we got two people on that one got it right. Yeah, so originally the Jungle Book was way darker. The storyline on it was way worse. Apparently, Sheer Khan played a lot large role in it and then walt i guess stepped in and said they needed to make it much more fun uh all right here you go what was the, what year was the jungle book released well wow. uh, one 1968 two 1966 three 1967 four 1969 let's see how close i was i i, I don't know what was your guess on it again i said 68 i i think it's 1968 but i hope i didn't spoil it for everyone i hope i hope i didn't leave anyone and lead anyone in the wrong direction i'd feel really bad (laughs) that's gonna be like the reason someone loses the entire game (laughs) i just watched that again for the first time in a long time and i told stephanie that the bare necessity song is very eerily similar to hakuna matata as far as it's yeah it is as far as its message Oh, I'm sorry, everybody. That was you me. let almost all everybody astray. <laughs> let the whole team down. <laughs> oh man, that's bad. Well, here we go. Number four. In Cinderella, they find a mouse in the trap. When Cinderella lets the mouse out, she gives it a name and then decides to call him Gus for short. What was the original full name she gave to the mouse? Now, I never would have knew this until Lila watches Cinderella a lot. One Octavius, two Otto, three Arthur, four Jackson. Who? Yeah, L- Lila loves Cinderella, so we watch it a lot now. And uh, I, I'd, I'd never seen it up until I don't know, like a year and a half ago. This is yeah, this is a tough. And now one. I can probably tell you anything about that movie that you want to know. I only. I, I, this is tough for me because I haven't seen Cinderella in a very long time. Yeah, I'm curious to see who will get it. So the. Uh, the answer is number one, Octavius. Hmm, interesting. Why Gus? 
I have no idea. All she right. just says, I'll call you Octavius. And then she just says, or oh, Josh Short. I don't know. I don't know what the purpose of that is. Maybe, maybe, maybe the there's a reason. Maybe like people that are time. named Octavius, people call him Gus. I don't know. I don't know. All right, number five. In Snow White, which dwarf put the key back on the hook when they left the diamond mine to go home? One, Doc. Mm. Two, Dopey. Three, Happy. Four, Grumpy. Mm. Interesting. I just watched Snow White the other day. Well, a couple months ago, and I'm trying to remember now. Kyle made these made this this series of questions, so I'm like, I'm trying to rack my brain right now. Uh, I'm gonna say Doc because I feel like Doc is the one who pretty much did everything. Who's the least likely one that would that you would trust with a key? No, that's true. You're probably yeah. You know what? You're right. That <laughs> dopey. I always okay. thought it was funny. Like as a kid, I always thought it was funny because he would put a they put a key to the vault right outside the vault for anybody that walked by. Like I don't know. As a kid, I just thought that was hilarious. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. But you're right. All right, that's the end of that's the end of round three. So let's see, Sean again. Sean is on fire Ooh. right now. Uh, looks like Stephanie Stevens uh, goes on the board, and Curtis Harris goes on the board, both with one each. Sean running away with it right now. Is anybody else close to him? Uh, we got a lot of people with one. Sean's got three. So we got gotta some get, people that got a yeah. Got two rounds left. All right, next we got live action films, and these are all going to be based around the newer live action stuff. So all the stuff that's been like the last five or six years. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. There might be one question about one that's a little bit older than that. That's one thing I I have not seen the new Aladdin movie, and I, I love Will Smith. So I owe it to him to go watch. See, it. I actually, I, thought, I actually funny. thought I was worried because, like, you, everybody loves Robin Williams' performance, but I thought Will Smith actually did a pretty good job. Who voiced ahead, Blue in the live-action Jungle Book? Ben Kingsley, Bill Murray, Christopher Walken, or Josh Gad? So I believe um, three of the characters are actually in the film. Correct? Three of the actors, just different yes. characters. Yep. So I do know that. I believe. I believe it is. Bill Murray, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't want to say who the other two voiced because I can't remember if those come up or not. Later. Oh, boy. We've, guys, we put these questions together a few days ago, so I, I'm trying to remember. I, I know a couple that are coming up, so, but the I can't remember is, any Bill of these. Bill Murray with it or not. really is, is famously hard to get a hold of. Bill Murray doesn't have an agent. You have to call his personal home phone and – right. Whether or not he answers is kind of just a, you know, is just fate. And he happened to really want to work with John Favreau, so that's the only reason he is actually. I mean, who, who would want to? John Favreau is a badass. He is. Question number two: Who played Belle in the live-action Beauty and the Beast? Kira Knightley, Naomi Watts, Tessa Thompson, or Emma Watson? Got a couple Disney gals now. Kyle, would you consider Pirates of the Caribbean? To be Disney, like it's obviously Disney movies, but like, would you consider that like, like in this recent run of? I mean, that came out what two thousand three, the original Curse of the Black Pearl. Yeah. So would yeah, you consider I'd that? Say. We've got we've got a question in here that deals with deals with a movie that's a little older than that. Okay. Yep. A Gosh. movie we watched a lot as kids. Oh, perfect! I love it. So this one, yeah, it looks like I'm looking at the comments. It looks like. Everyone I'm guessing one. probably everybody got that. If you're a big Harry Potter fan like myself, uh, Emma Watson's a badass. That was a you know that was a that was a very nice, in my opinion, probably the best remake they've done so far. I really I, yeah, that. I thought that was really good. Question number three: What year was the live action version of Cinderella released? 2014, 2016, 2015, or none of the above? So Cinderella was that the first? Did that kick off the new remakes? That was the first one, correct? Yeah, yeah, that was their that was their first live action attempt. Actually, that was pretty good too. Uh, yeah, I again, I'd never seen it. Lila loved it. I mean, she likes the animated version better, but um, we watched it. Uh, I don't know. It was a little while ago. It was pretty good. 
Um, I'm trying to remember whoever plays the stepmother does a really good job. I believe this this was before. If I'm thinking, I believe 2012. If I am remembering correctly, 2015. Wow, that feels like yeah. It was, it was pretty recent because they they've had a because I think right after that Jungle Book and then Beauty and the Beast was like 2017 somewhere in yeah. there, and then I think right after that might might have been Aladdin or okay. Gosh. Question four. What famous actor played the father of the twins in the 1998 version of The Parent Trap? <laughs> Dennis Quaid, Kevin Costner, Harrison Ford, or Daniel Craig? I mean, I got to say, all four of these guys, I mean, they're good looking guys. I mean, it's true. Yeah. I mean, they are. I would say they're all good actors. I would say Daniel Craig is the, he's, Got to be the yeah he's definitely the youngest. I think Daniel Craig's just turned fifty. The yeah, rest he's definitely the youngest out of all of them. All great actors, though. Be curious to see how many people get this. And most of at least I feel like the top two look alike, kinda like Dan, Dennis Quaid and Kevin Costner. I feel like look alike, kinda. Yeah, Dennis Quaid's definitely got a specific look to him. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong though. As they get older, they do kind of look similar. So, Parent Trap is one of those. That, yeah, we did. We watched an unhealthy amount. Yeah, of we time. did. <laughs> Question five: Josh Gad voices Olaf for the Frozen movies. What live action character has he recently played? Is it King Louis, Genie, LeFou, or Maurice? Another interesting one to see if people know who Josh Gad is. Fun fact, I actually played this character myself in the school play back in <laughs> circa 2003. And then one of them we called Dan, Crazy Maurice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, that's my nickname at work. <laughs> so the, the answer is number three for anybody wondering. But uh, yeah, Dan played LeFou uh, uh, in, I don't know, like fifth grade. And then, yeah, we call him crazy old Maurice at, at work sometimes. Mm-hmm. Wow, a lot of people got that one right. I actually thought that'd be a little tougher one, but honestly, Josh Gad kind of looks like a Lafu the way like he's just kind of <laughs> yeah, like just a short, stouter guy. Plays yeah, he does. Well. All right, so that's the end of round four. Let's see. Sean, holy cow! Sean, I'm running away with this thing. We have a we have a closet Disney fan here with Sean. I think Sean's a big Batman fan too. Yeah, he is. Sean and I got a. Sean, class is there anything you don't know? <laughs> That's right. Sean is the like walking uh, trivia god. All right, so let's see. Stephanie Stevens gets another one that puts her at two, and Stephanie Kibby is at two as well. So you might. We uh, looks. I mean, technically, Sean runs away with the win, but I want to see who gets second here. We got yeah, a fun yeah, little one. Could be, uh, yeah, could be could be an interesting battle for second. All right, last one. Disney parks. This is my favorite. I'm excited about this one. I don't know any of the questions on this one. Kyle made all these ones, so let's see how good I do. I led everyone astray. I got to make up for that. <laughs> uh, you had one of the questions on this. Oh, yeah, you're right. I did have one. I did have one. So Disney parks are interesting because now there's... God, how many parks are there now? There's got to be like... <sighs> oh, 10, man. Yeah, I, I'll admit, I haven't been to a Disney park since I was 10. So it's been oh. 21 years. Stephanie and I are going on August. So, all right, here we go. All right, what year was Disney World opened? We talked about Disneyland earlier. What year was Disney World opened? One, 1971. Two, 1969. Three, 1974. 1972. Sean says he grew up on comics and Disney. Honestly, that sounds like a not great... A, not a bad childhood right there. Yep. Let's see how many people get this. I believe, is it 71 or 71 or 72? I think I don't remember to be honest with you. I, I came up with the 71. question, but I actually had to look the answer up because I, w- I wasn't sure. I, I knew Disneyland when it opened just because it was like so revolutionary. Um, okay, yeah, 71. That's what my, my gut was telling me that, but a lot of people going with 69. Brooke got that one correct. So actually, it was originally slated to open in 69, and it had such delays after Walt's death mm-hmm. and other problems. <clears throat> All right, two, what is the acronym for Epcot? 
experimental prototype community of today, experimental possible community of tomorrow. I don't know why there's like little things after it. Uh, experimental prototype community of tomorrow for none of the above. So yeah, that's why one. there's like. I don't know why there's little little uh, letters after them. Must be when I was copy and pasting. I must have added <laughs> something. So the interesting thing about Epcot um, is Epcot originally was Walt's version of a, honestly, a little, prob probably a little bit of a racist community, if I'm going to be honest here. Um, he really wanted a very picture-perfect city. And what they after he died, obviously, they realized there would be no money. That's a, It's a money pit. So they turn it into Epcot we know and love now. But Epcot originally was supposed to be this like prototypical or prototype city for tomorrow. And they wanted like kind of only a specific type of like, you know, rich upper class people allowed in. It's very odd. How much was a ticket to Disneyland on opening day? $350, $250, $275, $375. Bonus points if you know how much it is today compared to then because – <laughs> wow how much is it today i should know uh almost almost 200 bucks wow and that's yeah. not like honestly if you're counting inflation i think they figured out it's still like four times higher even if inflation was counted compared to the opening day isn't that right or something like that yes yeah wow that's amazingly high <laughs> yeah it was like 188 bucks i think they said the average ticket right now was wow it's gonna be an interesting one see how many people got this Oh, a lot of oh, people. A lot of people got that. Two fifty. I did not know that. Can you imagine being able to get in anywhere at this point? I can't even get into a movie for two fifty. Like a that's like a fifth of what you'd pay. Can't even buy a candy bar and a vending machine for two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. Roughly how much land does Disney World comprise? One sixty square miles. Two one hundred square miles. Three twenty five square miles. Four fifty square miles. So I know it is roughly the size of the city of San Francisco, which if you put it in that in the terms of that, that is amazingly large. Like, mm -hmm. well, it's interesting too. When Walt was buying land for it, he wanted it to be so secretive. People started yep. eventually figuring it out, but he was buying it under a bunch of different company names. Yes. Um, he was just buying plots of land all next to one another, but he was using different company names uh, to have different transactions so that people wouldn't know what was going on. Well, and so they wouldn't jack up the prices. So if next yes. guy said, oh, Disney's buying up the property, I'm going to make it way more. Yep. 50 square miles. That is huge. If you really, I mean, if you think about that, that is amazingly <laughs> large. What's even more interesting, and I think this would be fun to cover too, is the like the city below Disney. Like we're all like yeah. everything runs. Yep. It's amazing. Uh, all right. Number four, which of the four is the smallest park at Disney World? One, Magic Kingdom. Two, Epcot. Three, Animal Kingdom. Four, Hollywood Studios. This one shocked me because I came up with the question, but I wasn't sure what the answer was. Uh, this one actually shocked me because this would be, as a kid, this was the only park that we actually ever went to, or at least that I remember going to. We, I think we went to more, but this is the only one I really remember going to. And I mean, it's massive anyway, and it always seems so huge. And then isn't I found it, out like how much smaller it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Than all the other are you talking about the whole size of it or just the park part? Just the park part. It's Animal Kingdom, right? Or no, no, it's Magic Kingdom. Is it Magic? Wow. Magic Kingdom is huge. I mean, no. I can tell yeah, you. Animal, there... Animal Kingdom is actually the biggest of them. Well, when you include like the safari and everything. I was going to yeah. go Hollywood yep. Studios if you included everything within it. But, wow, Magic Kingdom's the smallest. And honestly, um, after being – I guess a lot of them aren't built upon yet, so – Okay, here we go. We got some different people on this one. So Stephanie, Stephanie Kibbe, Kibbe, Stephanie Kibbe took second. She got second place. Uh, looks like Brooke Collins got on the board, and Mitch Scott got on the. Oh no, Mitch got two as well. So it's like Mitch and Stephanie Stevens got two. Um, got a lot of people with one. Stephanie Kibbe with three, and Sean with four. So, well done, everyone. That was that was a fun one. I really like doing that. Yeah, it I was. Mean, all right, hold on. So, okay, first of all, let me defend myself. Stephanie says hi. So, circumference of the land, the finished park, it is still the smallest 
It's still the smallest park. Magic Kingdom is like bursting at the seams with the actual land that takes mm-hmm. up. Because Disney World is oh, yeah. a bunch of different plots of land. All People think it's all because like, we thought it was when we went there for our honeymoon. We thought every park was like walking distance. Oh, heck no. You go five miles down the road to get to you know Magic Kingdom from Animal <laughs> Kingdom or whatever. So I'm just, you know, just saying. She doesn't believe me, but uh but I remember like if you watch that through, was great. That was that was a lot of fun. But if you you're walk right. through man, you're right though, Kylie. When you walk through Magic Kingdom, Magic Kingdom feels enormous. And honestly, I'm going through my head, I'm going through my head right now, like we're gonna be going in August, and it's still like there's so much going on in Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. It just feels enormous. And I think it still is enormous. It's just the land circumference for the other ones is bigger. So it's very interesting. But awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right you know what i'm gonna drag one in i'm gonna drag one in for wednesday and I'll, I'll have a couch but yeah guys we're gonna have regular trivia on wednesday and then every monday we'll have a themed trivia um yeah so so on wednesday we'll announce uh next monday's theme but yeah wednesday we're gonna do uh our normal five different categories um all a grab bag. It's all going to be random. So yeah. actually, we're going to use the game that we were supposed to have last Wednesday. The uh, we figured out what the issue with it was, so we got that all figured out. But um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna use that game because that was a good one. That was that was a really good one that we came up with on that too. Absolutely. Stephanie Kibby says Harry Potter. Harry Potter. I'd be. I mean, I'd be down for that for sure. Yeah. But I'd want to play rather than just host it too. Yes. So Keaton says, what about bat trivia? Don't worry, we're still gonna have Batman trivia. We're just gonna integrate it on Monday nights with other and, trivia. And we're we're gonna be revamping the Batman Theory channel a little bit. We've got a uh, a new direction we're going with that. Dan and I have been working on a lot of stuff with that in the background. So yes, we're gonna be integrating Batman trivia. We're still gonna be doing that, but then um yeah, we've got some some stuff on there that we're definitely working towards too. Uh let's see, Mama S says World Landmarks. That'd be a good one. <laughs> Only let me guess. Only only if I read the questions, right? Yeah, exactly. So Sean <laughs> says he's going to co-host Harry Potter, so you can play Kyle. Yeah, Kyle's very confident he could he could do well in Harry Potter. I'd I'd come up with the questions, and Sean and I can host with it. That'd be fun. That's right. Um. All right, guys. So we'll be on Wednesday night at nine thirty, same time, same place. So thank you awesome. so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, and congrats, Sean. Great job. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Have a great night, guys.